Greetings, my lovely subscribers. Now, spring is soon to be sprung. It hasn't really reached me here in the UK yet when I'm actually filming this, but I'm kind of preparing for it. I've already started slipping in a few more floral perfumes into my rotation. But I do actually have some things that I think are really great for spring. So this is going to be a real mixture of uh, price range. I don't think I've got anything over here that's going to go over maybe, a, I don't know what the prices are for the Dior's now, but maybe £150, um, which for me is really expensive. But wherever I can give you an, a more affordable alternative, I definitely will. But there are a couple of things I just think, and it tends to be Dior, to be honest. There are some perfumes where I've never really found anything that's quite as good um, or like a really good alternative. But of course, if you guys have any ideas when I'm talking about these perfumes, comment down below. So I'm going to start with a perfume that is absolutely the smell of a princess to me. And it's the perfume that I wore for my wedding ceremony, the one where I had the big dress, you know, I literally had a selky cloud dress, which is like a full princess dress. And I just couldn't think of anything more perfect than Dior forever and ever. So this is the version that you can get now. Um, it's not necessarily, I don't necessarily see this in stores anymore, but you can still get it from Dior. It is... I mean, I could, I'd describe it as a freesia perfume, but to be honest, this is just, to me, the smell of spring, the smell of light pink floral blossoms. It's so ethereal. It's light, but this is one that on me lasts for a really long time. I have no problem here with longevity. I can spray a decent amount without it getting overpowering. And it is just, honestly, it smells like angels. It's so beautiful. So the notes that they give you for this version, which is the Le Creation, uh, Creations, I think it's called Creations de Monsieur Dior. So they only give you, I think for that one, they just give you Freesia, Rose, Tincture of Rose, they say, and Jasmine. But this one... This one's been around before and it wasn't in a bottle that was as classy as this back in the day, which I think I had a little miniature of, if I remember correctly. Um, so I'm going to give you the notes from the older bottle because I think it's a better description of the general smell. So the top notes are freesia, water jasmine and ivy. Middle notes are rose, almond blossom and geranium. The base notes are nutmeg, musk and vanilla. But it's just so blossomy. It's so very delicate, tiny petals. That's what this smells like. It's so glorious and I've only ever smelt one thing that smells like it and it is actually a dupe of it. So if you and you can unfortunately only get it if you live in the UK. So if you're outside of the UK, if you can possibly afford it, I definitely suggest this because everything else that's ever been compared to it on Fragrantica, um, anything that I've been able to smell anyway, does not actually smell anything like this to me. But in the UK, Superdrug have a dupe brand called, um, it's called Atelier something, and they have one called Vanille, Vanille Blush. So I actually have a bottle of that. It doesn't last anywhere near as long as this, but it's really very similar. It's a decent dupe. It's maybe slightly more woody. Um, and I have a bottle of that that I keep at my parents' house. So that's one of the things that I wear when I'm there. So that's a really good alternative if you can find it. But this, oh forever and ever i will have you forever and ever truly the smell of spring talking of the smell of spring <laughs> so this is star fruit and white flowers from 4711 aqua colonia range this one they only give you star fruit and white flowers that's all they talk about when they talk about notes they don't like to give you much else going on here but i i'm quite sure there's probably other things going on here and in terms of white flowers I'd say there's definitely jasmine in this, but it smells blossomy. It smells, this one smells like white flowers on bushes. So to me, it reminds me of Philadelphias, which are the mock orange bushes that we get in the UK in early spring. And every time I walk past them, I just breathe it in. I'm like, oh, it's just one of the best smells that I could ever imagine. If I ever have my own garden, I will try to get some of those in my back garden because truly gorgeous. Um, 
this is one that is light, airy, really, really nice. It's it's a bit stronger than some of the other Aquacolonias, to be honest, because um, it, it, this one lasts on me a decent amount of time, but it's still a cologne, so it's not it's one for warm, lovely weather. This is another one that makes me feel a little bit like a princess, but it's a little bit fruity because of that star fruit, and it's quite an interesting fruity smell. But I do find it really beautiful. If this one's harder to find, I have another perfume. It's much denser than this because it's very musky, but it has a very similar fruit and floral note in it. And that one is Guess Dare, the original Guess Dare. I, I, I find that that one really, really reminds me of this and vice versa. But this is more watery. It's fresher. It's even more spring like it's not as musky. So it's, it doesn't have that kind of bar soapy musk in it. But it's got a very, very similar floral um, and fruit smell going on there. But yeah, I love this one. And I love breaking this out when it gets warmer. It's just such a such a beautiful smell. Next up on the list. So I have this in a solid perfume format because this is Lust from Lush. So this is very random for me because I really struggle with Jasmine, but this is the Jasmine perfume that I think is the closest to smelling like the, the Jasmine that, that grows in my neighbor's back garden. And you kind of what the smell of it wafts up um, during early spring in, in through our back room and I just when I smelt lust the first time I just lost my mind and I was like that is so glorious but it's also a very sexy floral this one um, but the perfume of it is actually a little bit too strong for me to cope with but I adore the smell so this Oh, I'd say in, in the solid format, you get a little bit more fruitiness in this. It almost smells a little bit like there's some kind of mandarin orange or something in here. But on the actual notes, it's jasmine. Yes, definitely. A very beautiful, natural, really, like really strong, very sexy jasmine. Um, but then there's a little bit of rose, a little bit of vanilla, vanilla, a little bit of sandalwood. But it's the ylang ylang in here that changes this to smell ever so slightly um, waxy, like even in the perfume, not just in solid form. Um, but it's it's just it's I, I, I just compared it to a sultry night where a, a woman's taking a, a very hot bath. And it's all steamy and there's loads of jasmine everywhere. It's really so seductive and beautiful, but it is really the nicest jasmine I've ever smelled. And these are only £10 for these little guys. Um, so if you if but if you prefer stronger perfumes, I cannot recommend the actual perfume enough because it is an absolute beast. It's gorgeous. If if you get the actual perfume, you you would only need to spray that once in the in the whole day. It's so strong. So this is one that I'm not entirely sure would be very easy to find, um, but it is kind of sitting in for something else that you could get as an alternative. So this is Matsu by Masaki Paris. So this is a beautiful lilac perfume and it is very strong lilac bush smell it has a gorgeous natural lilac scent a little bit of kind of soapiness and a gorgeous kind of creaminess from almond so this is the perfume that i got because i did have a bottle of um, a drop to Issy by Issy Miyake. I loved the smell of that perfume. It's absolutely glorious. But the ambroxan in it really caused me problems. So I had a look to see if there was anything like it. And this was compared to it as smelling just like it. So I went and found Matsu. And as it turns out, Matsu's actually been out longer. It came out in 2014. Whereas uh, a drop to Issy came out in 2021. So this one's been around longer, but honestly, they are, they're so similar. So if you don't like Ambroxan, then 
if you can get hold of Matsu, then this is the one. This is definitely the one. If you don't mind Ambroxan, it's probably easier to find a drop to Isse, um, which is also in a very beautiful bottle. It's just really, really glorious. So the, the notes in Matsu, top notes of peach, pink, pepper and rose, middle notes of lilac, wisteria, star, jasmine and orange blossom, base notes of musk, almond and sandalwood. And it's just, honestly, it really does smell just like a beautiful lilac bush. It's just so pretty. Um, and then a drop to Issy has almond milk, rose, orange blossom, star and ace, jasmine, solar notes, lilac, musk, vanilla, ambroxan and cedar. So as you can see, they're, they're, they've got some real crossovers. They smell very, very similar. Um, the other good thing about a drop to Issy, if that's the one you go for, is that it's it lasts forever. It's actually very strong. It's really soapy. It almost smells like a bar of uh, lilac soap. It's absolutely delicious. But yeah, that one lasted on me forever. Um, and it was really strong. I didn't need to spray much of it. This one's actually got a decent longevity. It's it's not quite as strong and beastly as that one, but that's probably why this works better for me. And I don't know whether that's the Ambroxan. Ambroxan, I think, probably makes things last a bit longer and amps the, the smell up a bit gorgeous though i can't wait to wear this one i'm waiting for the weather to warm up a bit so when it comes to a rose perfume it's kind of tricky for me because i i have two in my collection that are kind of quite straight up rose perfumes one of them is fleur fatale by kim kardashian but that one i don't i wouldn't wear it in the spring because i think it doesn't smell good until the weather heats up and that's when that one really blossoms um and we we tend not to get particularly warm springs in the uk but that's one to bear in mind if you have warm spring times that one is a bargain really good and my but my favorite rose perfume is the same with a lot of people is stella by stella mccartney and you that's impossible to get i've never really smelled anything too much like it except for i do think the rose note is quite similar in fleur fatale it's not exactly the same with all the other notes and it's not as dark smelling it's not quite as rich smelling but it, it definitely, I feel like the, the rose in those two perfumes are really similar. But the one I've gone for, just because you can actually get it quite easily, is White Tea Eau de Parfum. So this is the Elizabeth Arden. This is, um, it is it is a stronger version of White Tea, but this has a, they, I think they've called it a recycled rose water or something like that that turns this into a kind of fresh laundry and rose smell. It's still got that white tea scent. Mm, but I definitely get a lot of rose in this one. And I think it's um, a really easy way to wear rose if rose is not your like favourite note. Because one of my favourite floral notes in terms of actual flowers is rose. I love the smell of fresh roses. But I think it's almost impossible to find a perfume that actually smells like real roses. I've I've tried a lot and I tend to be disappointed by how sharp or how sweet they are. And, you know, that they don't smell very natural. They tend to go that kind of yardly direction of smelling a bit like a kind of tea rose and not so much like um, some of the roses that I really enjoy the scent of. This is a really easy wear because it still has that white tea DNA. So this has clary sage, sea notes and Italian mandarin in the top, white tea and mate, rose water and jasmine in the mid, and then the base notes of musk, amber, amber wood even, and tonka bean. So I find this to be a slightly more feminine and a ever so slightly sweeter, very rose forward version of the original white tea. So I think this one's a really good good safe bet i think it smells really classy really chic very pretty very light and it's just got that gentle rose so you're not going to smell you know you're not going to smell like an old school rose in this you know it's quite modern smelling so the other roses i have in my collection are a bit more fruity um, now these two unfortunately are both quite expensive this this first one's very niche so this used to be a signature scent of mine though for a little while until I um, decided it was just too expensive to continue with that so I've only got a travel spray of this nowadays 
but it is beautiful. This is Victoria Minya. This is Hedonist, Hedonist Cassis. So although this is a, a sharp black currant perfume, it also has, to me, quite a dominant dry rose in it. So the notes here are black currant grapefruit and rhubarb in the top. The middle notes are Cassis grass and Bulgarian rose. And then the base notes are cedar and musk. So I get a beautiful, it's very, it's so dry. If you, if you told me there was like a vodka note in this, I would believe you. It is that crisp and dry. Um, and it has that green grassiness. But the it's got a beautiful, dry, sort of ki kind of velvety Bulgarian rose scent in there, mixed in with the fruit. You get a, you get quite a lot of blackcurrant and quite a lot of rhubarb. Um, but my experience of actually wearing this is that it really did feel like a rose perfume. A fruity rose perfume. Really, really pretty. Um, so what I'll say is that Victoria Mini is really hard to get hold of, but I mean, the bo they're, they're beautiful bottles, they're beautiful perfumes. The other thing I have that smells quite a lot like this one, but um, more fruity, is a Miller Harris, which is a little bit easier to get hold of. Still not particularly cheap. So this is like... Um, this is lost in the city from Miller Harris and the Victoria Minya is drier and it's more black currenty. This one, the rhubarb is amped up in it, but it actually has notes that, are, that kind of have some crossovers. So you've got black cur black currant, bergamot and angelica in the top and that angelica gives greenness instead of the grass that you get in Victoria Minya. And then you've got rhubarb, geranium and rose in the mid. Uh, the base notes are Earl Grey tea, musk and amber. So it's got it's got dryness from tea as well. But then it's got the rose and geranium and the geranium makes this rose smell quite dry. So this one, I get quite a lot of rhubarb. So if you don't like rhubarb, probably not the one for you. But I do think that these have a real crossover. And you can often get these little 15 mils. I got mine from TK Maxx for about £12. So these you can find quite easily for quite cheap whereas i mean i you have to get these in a set but the actual bottles for 40 mil are about 160 pounds of victoria minya now you know why i don't wear it as a signature scent anymore but um but they're both really beautiful and i think they're really interesting takes on like a dry rose perfume so next up we have a tuber rose now i have um a Ted Baker tuberose perfume that I really like, which I think is a really good spring tuberose, but you can't get it anymore. It's called um, Extraordinary Woman. I think it's called um, Ted Baker XO or something like that. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it seems to have disappeared. I checked before I made this. So the one I'm going for is easier to find, despite the fact that I don't think it's in production anymore. It just seems to be really easy to get this for cheap. So this is Stella McCartney Stella Pop. Um, and this is a violet and tuberose perfume but it's also got a decent dose of frangipani it's got tomato leaf in it which i do think is absolutely one of the reasons i love this one so much um and it has a kind of <laughs> sweet bubblegummy doll head smell in it <laughs> so You've probably seen people talk about this one quite a lot. I know that a lot of people really like this one. I know Ksenia really loves this. Um, I do think it smells like Barbie dolls. It's really, really pretty. It's got that vibe to it. It smells this colour. Um, but I get a lot of violet in this. So this is top notes of tomato leaf, green mandarin, violet leaf, tuberose, frangipani, uh, violet, and base notes of musk, sandalwood, and cedar. You get a decent amount of sandalwood too. Um, this is just a beautiful, pretty, girly, lovely perfume. It's quite sweet. I think it really is best in, in warm-ish weather. If you can find a rollerball of this, that's the strongest formulation that I've found of Stella Pop. Um, for some people, I think this would be too doll-heady. It would have too much of that kind of strange plasticky smell, which I love myself. Um, and it might be a bit too sweet. And if that is the case, then Stella Pop Bluebell is actually too sharp for me. But it is, it's very similar to 
this but if you can imagine it's Stella Pop without that too much of that doll head smell and a, a dose of a kind of lovely bluebell scent which it's just for some reason that one I think it's because it's so similar to this and it confuses me that it's not as sweet um, and because I love this one I, I, I just don't wear that one but this it, I just this is a love this is a love I think it's gorgeous it's got a silly sprayer but I do love this bottle I think it looks cool <laughs> lovely tuberose and violet mm. so this one this one's going to be hard to find but you can go for a few from this same range let me just mm. yeah this is an osmanthus perfume and it's a relatively pure osmanthus this one a musky osmanthus so this is hugo boss and this is the scent for her this is the pure accord flanker so i've had loads of these but this is one that i've kept um this just happened to be my favorite out of all of the ones that i've had um this just lists bergamot, osmanthus and musk and it, it, it does smell quite simple. It is like a stripped back version of the scent for her. But it's really pretty. Um, it does smell very osmanthus -y, so it's got that kind of slight peachy floral smell. But the, the probably the reason this works so well for me is that it doesn't actually have additional peach. And although I, like the scent for her range is a, is a peach that I actually really appreciate and I think they've done really nicely. Sometimes I find peach a bit cloying. So it depends kind of what else is mixed with it. And the, the I like a really watery peach um, that tends to work quite well for me, um, like a juicy, watery peach, like peach juice on ice, you know, that kind of smell. If it's a bit more kind of condensed, you know, if it's like a concentrated peach smell, I struggle a bit with it. But this is incredibly similar to the scent for her EDT and the scent for her um, just the original um, version and also has quite a few crossos with, with the other one that I had for a while, which is the Intense. They all have that lovely peachy osmanthus, so you could get any of them easily and it would be lovely still, you know. But I, I really like this one for spring. I think it's a really easy, um, yummy perfume. I do think the scent for her range is like really good work perfumes. They're really inoffensive, really pretty, light, easy to wear. Um, I just think they're really nice. So I, I do like osmanthus and this is, an, uh, this is a good osmanthus, I'd say. So the other thing to mention about this one is that La Rive do have a dupe. Um, it's not one that I've actually bought myself because um, I've had so many bottles of this actual range, the real range. But they have one called Sweet Woman and that's a dupe for the original scent for her. And that's voted as smelling um, similar to the original and the EDT. So I think that's also a really good option if you only want to spend like, well, I mean, less than a tenner, you know. So obviously I can't talk about spring perfumes without talking about um, <laughs> at least one cherry blossom. I love the smell of cherry blossom trees, um, but I I did struggle for a while to find the right cherry blossom for me. So this is L'Occitane. Um, now I have this one, which is Cerisa Etoile, which is their limited edition from maybe a couple of years ago. This is just, it just happens to be my favourite version of their cherry blossom that I've smelt. But of, obviously, their actual original cherry blossom is a classic, beautiful cherry blossom. This one, to me, it has more of a kind of really fancy soap smell and also is slightly less woody than the original one, which is why it's my favourite. And you can get this one definitely on eBay. I've seen it, but any of the uh, L'Occitane Cerisa perfumes, any of their cherry blossoms will absolutely do do the trick for this time of year. This particular one has notes of water flowers and green notes in the top, middle notes of cherry blossom geranium and tuberose, base notes of musk and white cedar extract. But it is in the main a cherry blossom scent. That's That's the main note, I think, in this one. I think... Some good alternatives here. I actually have one to talk about in a minute. But also, if you just wanted to get the Elizabeth Arden Green Tea Cherry Blossom, 
that's also a lovely cherry blossom perfume i like this one best which is why this is the one that i have but that's a really very affordable and really good option if you want a light florally perfume that one's a little bit more spa like because it has that green tea note in it but it's it's got a really nice cherry blossom note in that in that particular perfume so yeah I, this is just this is a gorgeous one and it gets nicer the longer it's been on your skin so the other cherry blossom that i have is one that's more fruity because it has an actual cherry note in it so this one is like cherry blossom and red cherries like really tangy but sweet red cherries so this is monothem cherry blossom and this is a perfume that you can get for pretty cheap i think they're around hmm, 25 pounds if you buy them full price but i think i got this one probably for about 15 so if you again just all of these just google them and find the best price because that's exactly what i do so monothem cherry blossom has notes of cherry in the top cherry blossom in the mid and then base notes of musk and woody notes this one is a much more youthful cherry blossom, like I said, because it's got that really red cherry. It's almost it's almost a red the sort of red cherry that you get in sweet by Lolita Lempica, but like a bit tartar, a bit more tangy. Um but it has that really pretty blossomy smell underneath. So this is really fun, it's really young smelling, it's it's kind of spring summery and it's it's a bargain it's really pretty this one i haven't i i've i've decluttered most of my monothems this is the one that has managed to stay so yeah i think this is a good one it's definitely worth worth a 15 pounds so i have a few orchids based perfumes and for some reason they all seem to be getting discontinued so they're hard to find so i decided to go for this one which is a fruity fruity perfume a f well a fruity floral but it's got a really good orchid note in it so this is guess girl normally this has a big flower top but this was a um tester bottle so it doesn't have that so this one it's it's lovely it's it doesn't list having musk but this one does smell quite musky to me and it has the same kind of musk in that guest dare does which is one of my faves so this one has raspberry melon bergamot in the top middle notes are orchid lily and black locust and then the base notes are madagascar vanilla and australian sandalwood this has a really pretty noticeable orchid in it it's not overly sweet because it's got that tart raspberry but it's when it dries down because it starts quite sharp when it dries down it gets kind of smoother softer and a bit sweeter so it's not screechy which i was a bit scared about when i first sprayed it but it dries down and it gets a bit more musky in it and the orchid is quite a sexy orchid in this one so there's a few orchid perfumes that i've had that i think oh that's like a musky sexy orchid and this one is but because it's got that fruity raspberry, which is quite a strong note here, it's also, you know, quite youthful and light and pretty. Yeah, this is a really this is a really good shout if you just want a nice fruity orchid smell that isn't like overly grown up. Um, yeah, it's a really easy wear as well. My husband really likes this one. He does. He likes that guest musk. So um, he thinks they're sexy and I think he he thinks this one's sexy. All right, we've got another Dior and this is one where I'm afraid I don't have an alternative because when it comes to Lily of the Valley, I am very fussy <laughs> and I don't generally enjoy Lily of the Valley perfumes. But this one, this is Diorissimo from Dior. So this is another one from La Creations de Monsieur Dior. Uh, I might be getting that wrong, but it's from that that range so this is a tricky one this is the edt and as far as i can tell from the dior website i don't think they sell the edp formulation of diorissimo anymore but diorissimo oh yeah it says here la creations de monsieur dior good i did i think i did get that right <laughs> so diorissimo eau de toilette it has slightly different notes listed than the edp um but the thing that really sells this one to me is that although it's a very dominantly Lily of the Valley scent, it has a ylang-ylang note that gives it a slight sweet creaminess. 
And this is one of the few Lily of the Valley perfumes I've ever smelt that doesn't smell too old fashioned to me and too sharp or screechy. I really struggle with most um, Lily of the Valley perfumes. And if that's one of the dominant notes, it just goes too far into white floral for me. And I'm not really keen on classic white florals. But this, I mean, this is a true classic white floral, but it, it's got a spring-like blossomy sweetness in there and a kind of gentle creaminess from that ylang ylang. I get a little bit more of that jasmine as it dries down, but it doesn't ever overtake the perfume, which is good for me because, as I said, I'm quite fussy about jasmine. Um, but it's soft and it's pretty and it, I mean, it's, it's, it's slightly mature because I think a lot of white florals are slightly mature um, scent profile just because they are just so classic. Obviously, so many perfumes, especially in like the 80s and 90s, were like white floral bombs. This doesn't smell like a bomb. This is subtle. It's gentle. It's quite smooth. It's the perfect level of sweetness with that. You know, it's not so sweet. It gets sickly. But it's not so dry that it's like sharp. It's like, it's just very gentle and pretty. And sadly, I've never really smelled anything that I think smells quite like this. But I have no doubt that some of you watching this will be screaming at the screen and saying, I've got one that smells just like it. So if you know any, please do comment down below so that anyone who's looking for a more affordable version of this lily of the valley kind of scent please do let us know down below if there's anything that's a good affordable alternative because unfortunately at the moment i don't have one to suggest but yeah diorissimo an absolute classic <laughs> i've only got a tiny little baby of this one this is just a 15 mil of toka stella so yeah i've got a couple of, i've got quite a few perfumes in my collection that are called stella um this is an interesting perfume because when this first opens up, it is a quite a natural, watery, juicy smelling blood and bitter orange perfume. Um, and it literally lists blood orange, bitter orange and watery notes in the top. Right. So that's exactly what you get. You get this glorious, pretty, orangey, juicy scent. But it quite quickly starts to dry down and then this turns into a delicious floral perfume. So the mid notes for, for this are lily, freesia and wild orchid. OK, and then the base notes are musk and sandalwood. But the interesting thing about this is that it's it's a really kind of recognisable scent to me. Um, and when I first got it, I was like, I know I've smelt this. I know I know this smell from somewhere else. And I was like, what the hell does this smell like? Um, and then it hit me the more this dries down and the more it turns it like the the honestly for me on my skin the fruit almost entirely disappears it just leaves it leaves a kind of watery juicy fruity feel but it's not like oh this is really orange anymore um but it turns into a really pretty kind of floral bouquet but oddly enough I do think this really reminds me of Curious by Britney Spears. So in terms of an, of, of an of affordable alternative, that is the one to go for, I think. Um, oddly enough, they do, they're do not, not really similar notes, but somehow they smell quite, quite similar. Now, I had Curious by Britney Spears for a little while. Unfortunately, there's something in that perfume, along with, to be honest almost all of Britney's perfumes there's something in there that goes very sharp and screechy on me I don't know whether maybe they all have Ambroxan in um, but I assume it's some kind of aroma chemical because the whole fantasy range has it Curious does um, the only things that I haven't uh, had a problem with are the uh, what are they called the prerogative range but everything else kind of turns into a shampoo on my skin this one doesn't turn into shampoo, but it has that same beautiful floral note, that kind of bouquet smell that I get with Curious, which is crazy. But so weirdly, Curious is like magnolia and lotus and jasmine. And the fruity note there is like a really beautiful watery pear. Um, it's got tuberose in it as well and cyclamen. But I, 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 like I said, I don't really know how this smells like that. 
but it definitely gives me that vibe. This smells far more expensive. It smells smoother. I think this one also is compared, I'm not sure if it's this one, it might be this one, but certainly Curious is compared to um, Ralph Lauren. I think it's called Blue. It's a square bottle, and but for some reason, it's, you can't really get a lot of Ralph Lauren perfumes in the UK. You can't get Blue, and you can't get um, Rome, uh, Beyond Romance, is it? The pink one that I had for a while, the raspberry one. Um, but yeah, it's compared to that as well. So I think they all have this specific kind of lovely floral bouquet smell. This one's gorgeous, really, really pretty. I will be happy if some if I get through this one to actually buy a big bottle of it um, because I just think it's a lovely spring floral smell, really pretty. But like I said, if you want something that's much more affordable and you don't struggle with Britney's perfume DNA, then Curious is a really, really good option. So we've only got a few left. So let's talk about another rose perfume. This also was a signature scent of mine for a short time. Um, this is not the same bottle. Oh, this is a fruity rose. Mm. Gorgeous. <laughs> so this is Jean Charles, Jean Charles Brousseau. And this is Fleur, Fleurs de Ombre Rose. Not ombre rose. Ombre rose is a classic powdery rose. Fleurs de ombre rose is a gorgeous modern rose with a big dose of juicy sweet fruits. There's a lot of notes in this perfume. So let's have <laughs> let's have a look at them. There's rhubarb, tangerine, apple, melon, orange, blackcurrant, grapefruit, and bergamot in the top. <laughs> The middle notes are rose, peach, freesia, mango and jasmine. And the base notes are orris root, musk, vetiver, sandalwood and amber. There's a lot going on. So it's like peach, mango, blackcurrant, rose. That's mainly what I'm getting here. And I, I kind of, when I used to wear this back in, I think probably maybe 2007 or 8 or something like that, if I'm getting my years right, this one... I always sort of smelt like fresh, a fresh bunch of pink roses and pink jelly babies. <laughs> if you're in the UK, you know what I mean by that. It has this kind of, it's like a pink fruit. You think there's probably a berry in it, but is it raspberry? It's, I don't think it's strawberry. I think it's probably some kind of raspberry. It's got that kind of feel to it, but it's actually blackcurrant and rhubarb going on here. Um, there's something about the mango that makes this really sweet and tasty and yummy. But it's got a really pretty, um, like a really beautiful rose water kind of rose in here. Really fresh, really pretty, very girly, really, really nice. This is another one that I took away when we got married because I just feel like this is in the same way. It, it's not quite the same experience of wearing Forever and Ever because Forever and Ever by Dior is far less fruity and much more floral but I kind of put them in the same slightly princessy scent um forever and ever is a bit more of a mature pure princess this one's a bit more of a playful princess but they both make me feel princessy so this was another one that came away with me for that wedding week beautiful but what I'll say is um although this next one I think is discontinued if you can get it it, it kind of gives me similar feels because it's a peachy rose, so it gives this fruity rose vibe, but mm. so <laughs> if you can get hold of this tiny little cheap gem, this is um, Jennifer Lopez, this is Love at First Glow, it's missing its little thing because I, I never like those on the glow bottle, so I always take them off, but I love the shape of the glow bottles, this is just a tiny little 30ml, I don't think you can get Love at First Glow in anything bigger than a 30ml, but... I think that when I've worn this perfume, it feels like I'm wearing a a soap of this. So <laughs> um, it does share some notes. So this love at first sight is peach, neroli and bergamot. The middle notes are rose, freesia and jasmine and the base notes are musk, woodsy notes and vanilla. So you've got a, a really noticeable kind of watery, peachy fruit smell. And then you've got that rose watery smell. 
and you've got that hint of freesia like you've got in the other one but then you've got like a real musk of quite an obvious musk in this one that makes it smell like a bar soap so yeah this one i'm just shouting out because jean charles brousseau is a bit more expensive um but this one i think is also a really nice slightly fruity rose perfume i really enjoy this one i think it gets short shrift generally but I i've it's one that when i first smelled it i was like eh, it's all right but when i actually wore it i kind of fell in love with it I almost considered getting a backup and then I got a grip of myself because I've got over 200 perfumes, so I don't need backups. <laughs> so let's finish with one that I love and that my husband absolutely loves as well. Oh, the joy of this. I'm going to spray it out. Mm. Springtime in the Mediterranean. So this, it always goes like really blue on my iPad, but this is much more turquoise in real life. This is Elizabeth Arden Mediterranean. I love this perfume. I think it, I love the bottle as well. It's so delicious. So this is another, I mean, it doesn't actually list lilac, but lilac and wisteria, I think smells very, very similar. It's a powdery purple floral. So it's got that lilac -y smell from Wisteria, but it's got a delicious, juicy plum note in this. It's and it's also got what I think is supposed to be like a slight C note in it. It's got a very slight salty C note in this. I'm very fussy about salt, but I feel like this does actually smell like you're sitting in maybe like a restaurant surrounded by plum trees, Wisteria um trees and um you're on the coast next to the mediterranean sea it's beautiful mm. so this is plum sicilian mandarin and peach in the top middle notes of wisteria magnolia and orchid base notes of musk sandalwood and amber um i just I, I so love this perfume um i wore it recently it's the first real spring perfume that i've worn because i just couldn't wait anymore <laughs> it's just like it was a cold day but i still wore it it lasts quite well in cold weather actually i could smell this all day um but this my husband just really likes this one he fell for this straight away so it's kind of an easier purple floral to wear than things like a drop to issy and matsu because it's got that kind of fruity note that tones it down a bit so obviously with this kind of thing it's a very dense um floral lilac -y wisteria smell like very very dense smells like the bushes whereas this one just smells like you're near those bushes there's other things going on in it i got this for about 20 pounds um you can get this perfume for quite cheap i'm not sure it's in production anymore so i'd say get it now while you can but i absolutely adore mediterranean this is one that it, i might actually if i if i realize it's getting scarce i might actually get a backup bottle of this because i feel like i'm gonna go ham on this in the spring it's fabulous outdoors and indoors it's just beautiful so yeah i mean i think i've i started with a real favorite and i'm ending with a real favorite here so i hope that this was helpful i tried not to talk too much about stuff that was actually completely impossible to get um if you have any favorite spring florals especially if you know any good affordable alternatives to what i've talked about or just any good affordable perfumes generally please let me know down below i hope you enjoyed this and that there was some stuff in here that you uh that you're interested in bye guys